dear friends welcome to the nio studio this is dr devika r assistant professor giving a lecture on a very interesting topic circles and its properties the term circles i believe would be quite familiar to you all you'd have seen many circular shapes in your life such as the wheels of a cycle the dial of a clock circular plates the shape of your bangles and so on the two diagrams that i have shown here are circular in shape the first one is the wheel of a bicycle and the second one the dial of a clock now we'll deal more with the circles how about the shape of the circular figures they are perfectly round in shape second thing they are two dimensional shapes third one circles have a curved part and the fourth thing is that because it's on a plane it encloses a part of the plane let's see how we can define circles geometrically speaking a circle can be defined as a collection of points that are equidistant from a fixed point on the plane now you would have noted the phrase fixed point what do you mean by fixed point now what is that which is termed as center of the circle also you would have noted the phrase equidistant i have drawn a circle here with a point that is marked as c also have drawn one line segment within the circle and the second line segment that originates from the center of the circle to any point on the circle now as i have said before circle consists of a collection of points and every point on the circle is at equal distance from the center because every point on the circle is at equal distance from the center the term equidistant is used here equi means equal and equidistant means each and every point on the circle forms equal distance from the center of the circle thus every circle will be having a center every circle constitutes of a collection of points and if we draw a line segment from each and every point on the circle to the center of the circle we can see that those measures are equal in length now i will deal with certain attributes of a circle the first attribute is center center can be thought of as a point which is exactly at the center or middle of the circle so the center always comes in the middle of the circle and for convenience as the word center begins with the letter c the first alphabet capital c can be used to mark the center of the circle now the second important attribute is the radius as i have said just before because the circle consists of numerous points and if we can draw line segments from the center of the circle to any point on the circle we get equal measures and those distance between the center and any point on the circle is called radius so every circle will be having a center and radius definition i'll try to give one more definition for the circle circle can be defined as a shape where distance from the center to the edge of the circle is always the same now i have got one question for you you'd have seen the concept radius now how many radii can be drawn in a circle the answer is that we can draw any number of radius in a 
circle. It's not finite. The next important concept that is related with circles is chord. I have drawn a diagram here. Here the center is marked as O and I have drawn two line segments, line segment AB and line segment DC within the circle. Now what is a chord? A chord can be defined as a line segment joining any two points of a circle. As said before, numerous points or the collection of points constitute a circle. So if we take any two points on the circle and then we try to join these two points, we get a chord. So a chord is a line segment that can be easily measured and that can be easily drawn within a circle. Now, can you name the chords of this circle? Are you able to draw more chords within the circle? It's a simple thing to do. Just mark any two points on the circle and then connect these two points. Now, I have got another question for you. How many chords can you draw in a circle? Is it one? 10 or any number of chords. As said before, just like the radii, we can draw any number of chords in a circle. And note the spelling of the new concept chord, it's C-H-O-R-D. Now, can you think of a chord which passes through the center of the circle? See, a chord is obtained whenever we connect any two points on the circle. So, is it possible to draw a chord which is able to pass through the center of the circle? Can it still be considered as a chord? If so, is there any special name for such a chord which passes through the center of the circle? The new term that we deal here is diameter. Thus, every diameter is a chord which passes through the center of the circle. So it's important to remember that a chord can pass through the center of the circle, but we are giving a new term to it. It is called diameter. Now we'll deal with the relation between radius and diameter. What is radius? Radius is the length or it's a length of the line segment that is formed between the center of the circle to any point on the circle. Also, we have just seen what is a diameter. A diameter can be thought of as a line segment which passes through the center of the circle. And it is very interesting to note that there is a relation between radius and diameter. When we measure diameter, we can see that when we take twice the radius, we'll get diameter. That is, if we use the letter R, and it should be noted that we should use the small letters for representing the radius. And if we use the alphabet small letter D for denoting the diameter, we can see that diameter equals 2 into R, which means diameter is twice the radius. This is a very important relation that should be remembered while studying the topic of circles. Definition. Now we'll try to define what is a diameter. Diameter can be defined as a line segment that passes through the first thing. It should pass through the center of the circle. Second, it should join any two points on the circle. And third one, we have to note that a diameter is made up of two radii. I have used the term radii because radia is the plural of the term radius. Let's see another important concept related to this topic. It is called circumference. Circumference can be defined as a distance around a circle. 
So if we draw a circle and we if we try to measure the distance around a circle that is what is called circumference. Now we will deal with another new concept called the arcs of the circle. So you would have known the word arc here. It can be defined as a portion of the circumference of the circle. So first thing is that we should know what a circumference is. Only if we have the idea about circumference, we will be able to determine the arc. The purple colored part in this picture shows the arc of the circle. Let's see more about arcs. I have marked here a few points A, P, C, O and Q. The point O is the center of the circle, AC is a chord of the circle and it is interesting to see that the two points A and C divides the circle into two parts. Now each part is called arc with the end points A and C. We can see a bigger part and a smaller part here. P and Q are two points other than the points A and C. Also note that P and O lies on opposite sides of the chord AC whereas Q and O lie on the same side of AC. The arc that contains the point P is named as arc APC. The other arc that contains the point Q is called arc AQC. Now we have got two new terms as it is called the minor arc and the major arc. APC is called the minor arc and AQC is called the major arc. Thus we get a pair of opposite arcs APC and AQC. Please note this figure and in this figure AO and BO are radii drawn at the end points of A and B of ADB which is a minor arc. As I have just said before we have got a minor arc and a major arc. Thus, the angle AOB is formed at the center O and this angle is called the angle that is subtended by ADB at the center. Thus, degree measure of a major arc is always equal to 360 degree minus degree measure of its opposite arc or we can say that measure of a major arc is 360 degree minus the measure of its opposite arc. Let's see a new concept called cyclic quadrilateral. A quadrilateral in which the vertices lie on a circle is called cyclic quadrilateral. Let's see what is meant by interior and exterior points of a circle. As said before, Points, the collection of points constitute a circle and certain points lie within the circle and we can mark certain points outside the circle. The points which lie interior to or in other words we can say inside a circle are called interior points and those points which lie exterior or outside the circle can be termed as exterior points. Next is a new concept called the segment. In this diagram, I have drawn a circle with the center O and a chord AB. Consider the circle with the center O and the marked chord AB. Now, this chord divides the circle into two parts. We have got a smaller part and a bigger part. Each part formed is called segment. Minor and major segment. Because the chord 
has divided the circle into two parts. We have got two concepts, minor and major segment. The segment that does not contain the center O is called the minor segment, which is a smaller one. And the segment that contains the center O is called the major segment or the segment that contains a larger area. Now we'll deal with a few properties of circles. Angles inscribed in the same arc, which means angles in the same segment are equal in measure, which means the measure of angle ABD will be equal to measure of angle ACD and measure of angle BAC equals measure of angle BDC. Another property is that angle in a semicircle is a right angle. Right angle means it forms 90 degree. So whenever we draw a semicircle and if we measure the angle within the semicircle, it will be equal to 90 degree. Here AB is the diameter of the circle and as I have just said, measure of angle APB equals 90 degree. Next property is that opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So if we draw a circle and if we draw a cyclic quadrilateral and if we measure the angle, we can see that angle A plus angle C will be equal to angle B plus angle D and that equals 180 degree. Thus we have come to the end of the topic circles and its properties. We will go through the concepts once again. Circles can be defined as a collection of points. Every circle will be having a center that comes at the exact middle position of the circle. Radius is the distance between any point on the circle and the center of the circle and we can see that every radius will be equal in measure. The next concept that we have dealt here is a chord. A chord is a line segment that is formed between any two points on the circle. Diameter. Diameter is the chord which passes through the center of the circle and there is a relation between diameter and radius. Diameter will be twice the measurement of the radius or in other words we can say D is equal to 2R where D is the letter that is used to represent the diameter and R is the alphabet that is used to denote the radius. Circumference. Circumference is the distance around a circle. The next concept is arcs and, and in the topic arcs we have studied about the major arc and the minor arc. In the same way segment are of two types minor and the major segment. Also we have deal with a few properties of circles. Angles inscribed in the same arc will be equal in measure and the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Thank you all.